Today, we are thrilled to welcome alumnus Brent Reeves, president and pitmaster extraordinaire at Smokey John's Barbecue. Brent graduated from UNT's hospitality management program in 1999. He literally grew up in Smokey John's, the restaurant his father founded in 1976. Today, that Dallas barbecue institution serves thousands of customers, both at the restaurant located uh, at West Mockingbird and Harry Hines and through its robust catering operation. Chances are, if you've ever had a smoked turkey leg at the Texas State Fair, it probably came from Smokey John's. They typically serve 30 to 40,000 per year. After suffering a de devastating fire at the restaurant in 2017, Brent and his brother Juan rebuilt the business with the same hard work and commitment to community their father taught them. And although Smokey John himself passed away last year, his legacy is felt in every success Brent and his family achieve. Brent, thank you for being here. And Casey, take it away. Thank you, Claudia. And Brent, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, meeting folks like you and hearing your stories is actually, I think, the coolest and most fascinating and inspiring part of my job. So again, thank you for your time. But Brent, before we get started, I'd love for you to take us back to the beginning. We want to hear all the things, of course, your journey at UNT and what took you there. But more than anything, um, Smokey John's has quite a pop culture following in, in the Dallas Metroplex. And so I understand that you guys have not always been called Smokey John's. So can you tell us a little bit of the backstory there and what the name was before and how you came to be known as Smokey John's? Well, uh, thank you guys for having us, first of all. Um, so Smokey John started in 1976. Um, our dad is John Reeves. Um, he actually started the restaurant and uh, he was in a mortgage banking business, right? And he also had, he did roofing, insurance. I mean, dad did everything. Um, and so finally what happened to him was he would give turkeys uh, to people who uh, he did the roofs or close a loan for them and he would give them a turkey. Well, at some point he had like a hundred turkeys at his house and a friend came over and they said, look, smoke, oh, he said, John, you need a restaurant. So he finally opened a restaurant and he named the restaurant Big John's Barbecue. And so he got everything open, had the first week open and his pit caught on fire. So the pit yeah. caught on fire so bad, smoke went everywhere throughout the restaurant. Uh, then one of the customers came in one day and he said, man, you need to call this place Smokey John's Barbecue, <laughs> not Big John's. And so dad was like, oh, okay. So within a week, he had the old Big John sign taken down and he put up Smokey John's. And I so that's love how it. That's how he became Smokey John's. I love it. And so, you know, being the son of a restaurant owner, at what age did he put you to work? Because I'm oh sure he did. <laughs> oh, yeah. And it's beautiful because my brother and uh, sister are doing the same thing. We're get, getting them started young. That's um, right. So I, <laughs> I started when I was six years old. Um, so I came in the restaurant. Uh, I would come with dad and hang out with him. Um, at, at that time, we had this tabletop Pac-Man game. And I so know exactly I would, what you're talking about. I love oh, that game. Oh, man. That was my favorite game. Um, and I would say, Dad, hey, can I have a quarter? I said, okay, so you give me a quarter. I'd blow it in like four or five seconds. And I'd say, Dad, can I get another quarter? And so he did this over and over. And finally, he said, you know what? Go get a pitcher of water and a pitcher of iced tea. I was like, okay. So I grabbed both. And he says, okay, this is what I want you to do. Whenever the tables, like the customers have their glass half full, you go fill it up. Don't ever let it get less than half full. I said, okay, no problem, I can do that. So I go to the tables, I start pouring tea and water and um, the customer, you know, customer's like, okay, thank you. And then the first customer left and they left like $2 on the table. And so I grab the money and I run to dad and I was like, hey dad, they left their money and he was like no son they didn't leave their money when you provide a service people will give you extra money and that's called a tip i was like what does that mean he's like that's yours that's you that's yours for your service 
like, oh my God, okay. And he's like, if you do this, whenever you come here, you'll never have to ask for Pac-Man money again. That is incredible. And you know, there, there are so many layers there to your, your work ethic and who you are as a person and your morals and values and the fact that you ran to your dad and <laughs> said, I forgot, they forgot their money. I mean, I don't know that one of my kids would actually do that. The other one definitely would, <laughs> but you know, we're working on the other one. We'll get her there. Uh, but no, that's really remarkable, Brent. And so you've, you've worked your way from filling up glasses that were half empty to making them a hundred percent full and, Absolutely. and earning your own dollars to pay for your things in your Pac-Man game. So number one, did you ever beat the Pac-Man game? No, never <sighs> did. I never did. I, I don't even know who won, anyone who did. <laughs> I know I kept a the high score for a long time until my brother Juan would come and then he'd beat my score too. So, but that's what big brothers do. I was about to say, he must be the oldest. <laughs> He's the oldest. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay, so you worked in Smokey John's Barbecue Place from the time you were six until all through high school too, and and you're still doing it to this day. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Yes, all through high school. Uh, so actually, when I was 13, 14, I kind of wanted to start making some money, and so Dad was like, "Okay, no problem. You can work for the restaurant." And it's really in the summers, um, and so he said, "You're going to start." like everybody else, you're going to start washing dishes. So that was not as cool as the tea and water thing. I mean, that was air conditioned. That was wonderful. But the whole di washing dishes and bussing tables, man, it was a lot of work. Um, but, you know, it made me earn it and made me respect hard work. But the biggest thing is it made me respect those positions in the restaurant because without those guys, you don't have clean dishes. You don't have anything to serve the food on. And so it created an incredible appreciation uh, for now, especially our team members that are uh, dish technicians. I love that. And I love the new title you've developed there. That is very special. So that's oh, great. Those are special guys. Those are special I'm, guys and gals. <laughs> absolutely. A hundred percent. So, you know, it's interesting because you would think that if somebody such as yourself, who's brought up in this uh, restaurant empire and, and building this legacy here, you know, why would you take the time to go to college? Why wouldn't you just keep pushing ahead, full steam, running the show and, and trying to make everything work, you know? So what made you decide to take a break or uh, try and work both things out and, and head up to UNT? Well, so our dad was big and our parents were big about education. Um, so we all went through private school all our lives. Um, so that's a big investment. Um, they weren't investing in private school so that we could just stop there. Uh, so we, I always knew finish high school, go to college, uh, get a job. Um, so it was the, the next step, finish high school, and then, so I had this kind of idea that I might go into the restaurant business. And honestly, the reason why I chose restaurant, uh, hotel restaurant management was because I'd been around restaurants so much. Um, I wasn't a great student. I didn't really like learning. So I thought this would be the easiest way to get a degree. That's really the reason. <laughs> Well, it looks like it worked out in your favor. So what are some of the big takeaways <laughs> that you got from, your from the program at UNT? Uh, what, are, what are some things that uh, contributed to your success here? The staff. UNT's faculty was amazing. Dr. Clay, Dr. Holly, like these, this, this faculty was amazing. And they all had experience in the industry. They weren't just kind of teaching you from a book. They were teaching you from life. Um, I think uh, Dr. Whitaker at that time was teaching in College Inn, a class called Dining Room. Um, it, they, those classes completely um, brought the industry to life. And there were so many things. We're mom and pop. There were so many things that I never had uh, an appreciation for, for hotels and even for the restaurant industry. You know, we kind of just you know, make decisions by a hip, you know, from the hip, you know, right. there were a lot of different um, tools and 
the cost controls and all these things, it was amazing. It, it just, it, it made the whole experience just valuable for me. I love that. I think that that is really special that you can still remember the names and, and you say this with such a fond, you know, you can tell this is a fond memory. You've got a great big smile oh, on your face and had such a great time. I love that. Okay, so we've got a couple of questions rolling in here for, for you. So I'm going to take one here. Um, it sounds like, it, uh, pardon me, I haven't completely read this yet. For all of us barbecue novices, what are some key nuggets of advice that Brent can pass along to us regarding briskets specifically? What to look when purchasing one, when to prepare at home? Nice. And uh, for those with the, goodness, this is a multifaceted question. All right, <laughs> let's, all right, let's start with purchasing a brisket okay. and what are you looking for? Okay, so my brother and I learned this from our dad. What, we look, what we're looking for is a large, heavy brisket. For us, that's our style. We like a brisket that has full fat all over the brisket. What we see sometimes, like some, we used to do custom cooking and we would have customers that bring their brisket pre-trimmed. Disaster. You need all of the fat you can to cook a really nice brisket. Um, so the biggest thing we look for is size. We like the 14 to 16 pound brisket. Um, and then we also like the marbling or the fat to cover all over the brisket. That's a beautiful brisket. That's great to know. I'm not going to lie. I'm not a huge fan of the fat pieces personally. So I tend right. to go for the leaner ones, but that makes perfect sense. You get a lot of flavoring from that. Oh, got to have the flavor. Absolutely. <laughs> so if people don't have a smoker at home and they mm -hmm. want that delicious smoky flavor, what do you recommend? If they don't have a smoker at home, okay. It's going to be very <laughs> difficult to have a really good smoke flavor if they don't have a smoker. Um, one of the things that I like to do, like if I'm grilling at home, I still actually sit wood chips in my grill. Um, so again, there's a difference between grilling and smoking. A lot of times people at home are grilling um, where you're making burgers, it's more of a high heat. Um, but when you're smoking, you're cooking around 225 degrees um, when you're grilling, you're cooking a little bit higher. Um, so what you can do is take wood and put it in the bottom of your, of your grill um, and separate your wood away from your, uh, your fire. And uh, what I like to do is actually soak the wood chips and then sit that separately. So as it steams, um, you still get a little bit of the smoke in, the, in your meat as well. All right. That is great to know. And what about cooking it in the oven? Is that ever something that people would try to do? Or is that something, is that a thing? It's a thing. It's a thing. <laughs> we don't do it, but it's a thing. You know, um, we, we call that cheating, <laughs> but you can do it. Like if you're, if you're in a hurry, one of the things that you can do is let's a little bit later on, Juan and I are going to show you how to uh, season some ribs. But what you can do is you can take your ribs, uh, season them really good, put them on the grill for maybe an hour, hour and a half, and then you can flip those ribs so that you can get some grill marks, so you get that char on it. And then once you finish that, you take those ribs off the grill, and then you can put it in a pan with a little bit of barbecue sauce, tighten it with foil, and then just let it simmer in the oven for about 300, 325 degrees, and you're, you're gonna be all set. You'll still have the fall off the bone experience because That's of the steam. Hey, going back to the brisket real quick. So we personally don't have a smoker and my husband has been toying with the grilling the, the brisket and he did exactly mm -hmm. like you described. So that makes me excited. We're doing something right. It turned <laughs> out beautifully, right. but, um, we found that the meat stops cooking at some point and it kind of gets to this, this point where you kind of have to wait it out. And I, yes. it escapes me now what that is called. Do you know what I'm talking about? And it just, I don't. you don't have a clue. <laughs> but, okay. I'm crazy. It's no, fine. No, no, no. I've heard that. Yeah. Yeah. So, we, so go ahead. I'm sorry. No, you go. No. So one of the things you can also do I mean, when you were asking the questions about uh, brisket, what, you know, kind of one of the things that we do, 
we also trim some of the fat down. Okay, so you want the heavy fat, but then what you want to do is, is trim the fat um, to give a little bit more of an aerodynamic, uh, aerodynamic flow of your um, uh, smoke all over the brisket. And then it also allows that fat to render a little bit more um, because you'll have those heavy areas of fat if you don't. Um, and sometimes that can prolong your cooking process as well. Good to know. Good to know. Well, thank you for that. Hey, can you tell us, I see there's several different barbecue sauces and rubs. It looks like a yes. cayenne pepper that you have there on your table. Mm -hmm. Talk to us about these. Okay, so this is our signature barbecue sauce. Um, our dad created this recipe over 40 years ago. Um, it's a really cool sauce, in our opinion. It has uh, some hints of flavor from Memphis, um, some styles from the Carolinas, and then it finishes with a little bit of the heat that we like here in Texas. Um, not overpowering, but just a little bit of a spice. And then there's a beautiful, sweet, the brown sugar flavor that you'll taste as well. I love it. That's really special. Hey, I, I'm sorry for just a second. My computer died that had the questions on it. I just got it booted back up. But uh, going back to the smoker real quick, somebody's okay. asking exactly, is there a brand of smoker we should consider buying and where's the best place to buy a smoker? Not everybody okay. has the fortune of, you know, having a personal built one like I think you guys have. So. <laughs> we do have a personal built one. We actually <laughs> I have a hear about that made. too. <laughs> That's incredible. Um, so, you know, the winning smoker is the big green egg. I mean, you just can't go wrong. That bad boy takes away all of the, the skill. <laughs> you, really, you really can just sit, set it and forget it. Green egg yeah. is beautiful. So it's worth the money is what I'm hearing you oh, say. Oh, it is. Oh, it is. You're going to play around with it to see what temperature you need to cook your uh, brisket at uh, or chicken. And it's it, like, if you don't know much about barbecue or smoking, the green egg is very um, favorable for those who are novice. I love it. And I love very the fact that friendly. number one, it's green. So maybe we should talk <laughs> to the green egg and build a partnership here. I, 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 are you I guys thinking what I'm we thinking? haven't done it. <laughs> Me <love> either. It. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, this is not endorsed by the green egg or anything like that. We are not being paid to talk about them. So um, thank you for that little tip and appreciate that. Um, so let's go back to the sauces for a second then. The barbecue okay. sauces. Um, I think when we last spoke, you had mentioned that people up in Denton can actually find this barbecue sauce somewhere around campus. Is that right? Yes, you can now buy our sauce at the CoLab. Um, we just uh, sent a shipment in this past week. So we're so excited about that. Um, and it's so funny when I was delivering uh, the product to the CoLab, I'm thinking, man, I remember, you know, years ago when I was at Sweetwater, just <laughs> really having great nights. I never would have thought I'd be back here selling sauce and rub to my alma mater. <laughs> That's, it was amazing. It's come full circle. I mean, oh look my at God. that. It's amazing. Hey, tell us a little bit about the CoLab. For anybody who isn't familiar with what the CoLab is, uh, is it something that they can purchase online or is it an in-store purchase only? Yes, yeah, so the CoLab now, I believe, will be offering curbside and online uh, services as well. Um, they're going to have a lot of cool local things. Of course, uh, UNT um, merchandise as well. Um, but we're going to be a, a vendor that's going to be there as well with our sauce, also with our Smokey John's barbecue rub. It's the easy to show you a little bit later. And then uh, our signature hot sauce as well. And this is just... This, is, this makes the best buffalo wings. Oh my God, they're so good. <laughs> <laughs> You're making me hungry, man. You're making me hungry. I'm telling you. Listen, I'm sorry these questions are all over the place, but they're all so good. And I really want to jump back to the brisket for just a second. So bear with okay. us. Somebody just saved me. It's the stall. When you are cooking a brisket, oh, it kind yeah. of stalls out and you've got to wait it out. Do you use the Texas crutch or do you just continue to wait it out? So you've got some options. You can go the Texas crunch route um, or uh, what we like to do is we wrap it with butcher paper. 
um, and then allow that brisket to finish cooking. It kind of steams a little bit, kind of breaks the fibers of the meat, and it really tenderizes that brisket. Um, some other people use foil as well, but for some reason, for us, we've used the butcher paper, um, and we have just seen incredible results. Uh, we've actually been doing that now for about a year, uh, and it's just created a completely different um, quality of brisket for us. That's great to know. So thank you mm -hmm. for sharing that with everyone. All yeah. right. I cannot believe it. It, it. I'm looking at the clock and it is already almost 430. So oh my God. I, I know, right. Time flies when you're having fun. And guys, if you're just joining us on Facebook, we are talking to Brent Reeves of Smokey John's Barbecue. And he is about to tell us a little bit about how to season our ribs to make them just delicious. So all Brent, right. <laughs> All right, so my brother's going to join us. Uh, my brother Juan, he is also co-owner of Smokey John's Barbecue. What we're going to do, he's got some uh, ribs here and some chicken wings. So one of the things we do on Wednesdays is we do smoked chicken wings. Uh, we use the first and second joint. Um, they're like party wings, that's what they're called. But when you cook these bad boys, you smoke them, it gets so tender fall off the bone it's ridiculous all right i'm gonna get some gloves this is one hey ladies and gentlemen hey Juan. now this is the deal we're brothers and we're brothers so that's cool <laughs> you guys have the best jokes too i i've got to tell you while you're getting your gloves on guys um brent will host a facebook live is it every wednesday night brent or every night every night every night we're every night okay so we're if you're not plugged in to social media for Smokey John's. You guys have got to check these guys out because they are entertaining. They are not <laughs> only great at what they do, but they are hilarious. So let's, you know, pay them some attention if you get a little, a little bored and need a, a fun distraction in the evening. So um, looks like you've got your gloves on and you are ready to go there. So ready to rock it. and roll. Yes. All sir. right, guys. So we've got um, so. How, what we use for our restaurant is a St. Louis style rib. So this St. Louis style cut is, um, it, it's, it's the spare rib, but what they do is they cut the brisket part off of the, of the rib and it gives you a nice, clean, even rib. You get a much more uniform uh, rib. It makes it better for our quality. Absolutely, and it cooks no. evenly. No, there are restaurants that do have the other piece. Yeah. They do a thing called rib tips. We don't do that, but that's a great option as well, especially if you're at home. Big thing in Chicago is the rib tips. They, they go crazy over rib tips. All right. So one of the things that we're going to do, what we like to do is to get a little water on our ribs and whatever the proteins that we're using. Um, this just creates a little bit more of a... Um, it creates, it can create a, a binding. Yeah, it allows the seasoning to really hang on to the, to the meat that we're using. All right. So when we season our, now our seasoning is incredibly potent. So if we sneeze, we apologize because it, it, we use the highest qualities of seasoning. Uh, we use a local vendor here in, um, in Dallas and they actually uh, make our, our recipe. They make our recipe. Um, they've been around since like 1870. Yep. And they're a family owned business like us. And what's awesome is they're also customers. They are. <laughs> they eat here every Saturday. And before they, the pandemic, they were, they were, they were regulars every Saturday. Now they, they pick up because their, uh, their parents are older. So they're trying to be safe. I so love that move. you guys are locally sourcing your, your products there. That's, that's Absolutely. really fantastic. Okay. So one of the things I want to show you kind of. Like for us, we love a full flavor on the rib, right? We, we don't want to miss any part of the meat. We want everything seasoned. So when you take your seasoning, you, you want to get the sides of the rib. You want that flavor all throughout that rib, okay? So when it gets a little dry, now this is our style. Some people don't do this. We like to do this because we like to have a full flavor on that rib. And it makes a nice coat on the on the ribs, which is going to make a nice bark when you smoke it and crispy. And we'll, we'll show you what that looks like in a second. And that's part of where your bark comes from. Sometimes people don't season enough. 
And then what happens is when you cook your ribs or chicken, it just kind of has no color. No. It's almost just basic, almost orange. Yeah. You know. It looks like cooked meat, but just yeah. Look painful. Yeah. It doesn't look flavorful. We want it to flavorful. look good too. Yeah. You gotta look good. You know. Right. As That's Dion right. says, when you look good, you play you good. Play good. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Oh my uh, and goodness. also, when, uh, what's interesting about our rub is while we're using the same exact seasoning for both products, it plays a little differently with the chicken. The mm -hmm. chicken can sometimes, people say, well, your wings are kind of spicy. It's not that they're spicy, it's just that uh, it's a smaller piece of meat and it's, it clings more to the chicken. And as a result, you do get a little bit of a kick, which we think is fun. And uh, it's not too much for the kids can't eat it, but it, it does have a little kick to it. And sometimes we do this. No, I'm just kidding. You don't, that's not, you don't have to do that. That doesn't help anything. I mean, it's, it's cool when I see the guy do it, but it, it doesn't really do anything different. <laughs> Guys, I'm serious. This is just a little sneak peek of what they do every night on Facebook Live. <laughs> If you are not tuning in, you are missing out because these guys are a riot. Uh, all right. So guys, here you go. That's a well-seasoned rib. Is that a seasoned that. rib? We need to throw that on right now. Does that make you excited? Man. I'm excited. Eat oh eat my this. God. I just feel like I want to eat it just like this and I don't even eat pork. Okay. So. I don't eat a lot of raw meat. So, that, I don't have that so th that's ready to go. And we're, we're going to do the wings magic. Are, Look at those wings. Now, this is a key step that we got to let them know. Yeah. One of the things you also want to oh, do is marinate. let this sit overnight. So what That's we tell cool. everyone when you use our rub, do it the night before. If you know, it, like, so let's say Friday night, you're going to, you know, you're going to smoke on Saturday. Right. Season everything up. Wrap it with plastic, saran wrap, whatever you use. Put it in the refrigerator. The cooling part, the whole that whole process really does help to marinate. Absolutely. And uh, it's going to create not only flavor, but tenderness. Absolutely. Because this rub will actually tenderize your meat as well. Absolutely. And there is no meat tenderizer okay. in it. No, it's not. Just the seasonings and the spices. Absolutely. Are, they'll, they go to work. So Absolutely. Good, good so this is ready. This is it. You, you don't have to do anything else. Like, you don't need... A, like another spice or anything else to yeah, add to, to this meat, you're ready to go. Okay. So I like grill, it. This is, this is indirect heat. You want, you don't want to put this directly under, under the fire. Cause that's going to make a mess. I'll take this. You're going to take that away. Yeah. Okay. So All what right, we're so going to do is switch up. I'm sorry. No, you're great. Hey, if we've got, say people maybe don't like their chicken wings as spicy as these might be, is it okay, okay to not let those marinate and just kind of cook them after a you few can. minutes and that'll you kind can. of mute the... It, the it's all, yeah, so it's all about the portion that you use on your chicken. Okay. So if you do a light portion, toss them, slide it in overnight, it's going to be fine. If you go okay. heavier with the seasoning, then you're going to experience a little bit of a spicier taste. It's, it's going to be totally your preference. Okay, great. Hey, mm -hmm. so tell us about the woods that you use to smoke the meats. Are we talking post oak, hickory? What, what are the options that are out there and what do you guys prefer? So what's popular right now is oak um, and pecan. We still go old school. We like hickory. Hickory burns um, really smoothly, really evenly. Love the flavor, and it burns a little bit longer to me than uh, pecan and oak. Uh, so we really like that. That's great to know. So you heard it first, guys. All right. All right. So what so are you guys working on up. right now? So we're going to uh, transition from the uh, raw meat, and then we're going to come and show you what it looks like afterwards Juan actually is going to get that Man, the, it's like the, you guys are professionals what you know he is he's a professional <laughs> um i'm just happy to be here you got to um, give credit where credit is due my friend you have, you have to do it you have to do it <laughs> hey you have uh, an amazing team apparently we've got someone um out here that's from illinois and says they want to know what the texas crutch is that we had talked about a minute ago yes um so when you wrap the brisket, it doesn't have that same crunch that you have if you were to leave the meat exposed while it's cooking. Um, so when it's exposed, it's gonna just, it's gonna have a really crispy, crunchy flavor. 
and you get those so those burnt ends are going to be crunchy and it's it's real good it, it is good it's delicious it's a, i'm going to wash my hands real quick we don't want to cross uh, contaminate to, no we, we don't want to cross that. contaminate uh -uh. good practices there Okay, so that was one of my next questions. Is is so it offensive to dip? Don't. Okay. The ribs we don't put in the sauce. Um, we actually have a guy who used to be with us who said you can't eat anything with sauce. You have to try it without the sauce. Not that he didn't love our sauce, but he thought the meat never have. You didn't need it if you didn't want it. So if, if right. we brought guests, he would always make sure that they tried everything without the sauce. And then afterwards, if they're sauce people, go for it. But the way I think that's we like to toss in the sauce because it just kind of gives you, it's part of the presentation, part of the flavor. Sure, that's a great approach to take. I appreciate that. All right, guys. So what we have here, we just seasoned that delicious rib. And now, look at that. Huh? Like a baby. Look at that. <laughs> look like at that baby. baby. I'm going to so call him Jimbo. <laughs> no, I'm not going to name him i'm sorry we're not yeah, gonna that's, name him. that's just weird don't do that's, that that's gonna be weird no <laughs> so, so what i want to do is just I'm cut into lunch. right <laughs> so what we're gonna do is cut into him uh so you kind of can see and that's the kind of knife you're gonna be needing we get these knives what is that uh, called brent what is that it's a, what kind of knife Vic, is that victor knox it's a victorian knox. victoria knox it's a beautiful knife it's yes All right. it's lovely so it also looks dangerous it's dave it can be but the it, wrong it's loving right now <laughs> <laughs> and that's what you're looking for all right bring it a little bit closer you got to get closer? a little bit closer yeah come out from behind that table we need a real live okay oh. hang on just a second bring it down right. just a little bit a little bit there we go oh, oh oh that's perfect how about that that's what we're looking for magic you see the bark and then you see the beautiful meat there, the got texture, got there. some smoke. What I'm gonna let you do is let Juan taste that. All right, and I'll take one for the team because that's the kind of guy that you I You do am. such wonderful work. What I'm gonna do mm. is show you one of these wings. Tell me, am I in the spot there? Yes, that's perfect. Oh man, look at that wing. Okay, now that I'm this close, I'm gonna... Oh my God. And I eat these every week. Look at this. Though. Oh this my is God. Crazy. It just Look at that. Right off Look at that. Look, Look at that. that. That's mm. incredible. Mm. You guys, mm. what a rough life you have. I am I'm so sorry we, for this. We make you know, sacrifices for our, for our fans and for our customers. If there's anyone that makes a donation towards uh, the pain we experience every day in eating, um, you can use our GoFundMe page. No, I'm just kidding. No. <laughs> <laughs> But I wanted to show them one more thing that we didn't talk about. Okay. Because people were asking, we talked about the barbecue sauce. Obviously, we just showed you that's the same rub that's in this shaker that's in the collab there at UNT. The sauce is there, but we also have our hot sauce. What does that go well on? Well, we're not only known for our smoked ribs and barbecue, we're known for our catfish. So this hey. is catfish filet. Okay, hold it up just a little bit. Long. Yeah, that's perfect. There it is. Yeah, that is perfect. And I'm going to show you how perfect it is. So it's, it's tasty just like this. Mm -hmm. You don't need it. However, mm. when you want to take it up a notch, as a great TV chef used to say, mm -hmm. one of our favorites, one little guy, he was always taking it up a notch. Put a little of this on there. Oh, my goodness. Are you just going to shake it on there right now? Yeah, well, I want to let him see. Right in front of the people? And I guess oh he's probably going to have to show us how to eat it too, right? Well, Casey, I think I think you're so right. I mean, Casey, once again, I mean, I find myself taking one for the team. You should do that. But that's the kind of guy that I am. How are your fries? Well, you know, we do seasoned fries. We don't just we don't just put fries in there. Mm. It's got our special fry seasoning, which we have. Which is coming started. soon. We haven't bottled that yet, but it's coming. Oh man, oh this is God. so exciting! So we can mm. get all three of these different seasonings at the collab. Is that correct? Not yes, ma'am. Oh. Mm -hmm. Okay, oh, so a quick question about the chicken wings. So okay. how do you stop the wing skin from getting leathery? Hmm. 
Okay. That's a, that's a really good question. So part of that is temperature. High heat. High heat. So once you kind of get the, the wing smoking the way you like it, then take the heat up, crank it up a little bit, and then you're gonna kind of crisp that skin back up. That's, that's if you're cooking at home. It's you can get that skin crispy right where you like it and then take it off. He loves it's, it. I do it all little, the time. <laughs> it's a little bit easier for us because we have a rotating uh, rotisserie smoker. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's easy to get that even smoke, mm -hmm. turn the heat up. It, it actually is crispy when it comes off and mm -hmm. then we toss it in the sauce and that's where you get the, the real flavor. Right. The final okay. result. Mm -hmm. That's great to know. So how long do we typically expect to leave a rack of ribs on the smoker or same with the chicken wings. What's the time link there? Um, so smoked chicken wings, again, it just depends on what, depends on what temperature you're going to cook at. If you're going to be around how many you're cooking, how many you're cooking, how big your smoker is, um, or even your grill, because if you're using just a old school Weber grill, you're not, you're going to, you're going to cook those on indirect heat first them back on the fire that's where you're gonna and that's where you're going to get your crispy skin back right. does that oh, make sense yeah. what a great and so, tip and, Thank and on you. the ribs and on the ribs it's roughly three hours three to four hours and yeah. it's really a texture test mm -hmm. once you as you're as you're starting to get the color that you want you want to check and see if you've got the tenderness coming in and right when you squeeze the rib you can feel the bone if it's if, if it's beginning to break and it's almost as you're you can flip it and it's almost about to break and then you're you're, you're pretty close when the bone begins to separate where you see this, yeah. if you saw before, uh, there was no, there's no separation of meat and bone. When the bone begins to separate, that means that you're getting close to being done. What a great thing to know. Thank you guys. Mm -hmm. That is fantastic. All right, so we've talked about chicken wings and brisket. What about sausages? Do you guys deal with sausage at all? Oh yeah, so we, <laughs> wow. That's a weird question. <laughs> All right, so we have uh, a Mississippi style sausage that we use that we that we sell. Um, we also have a Denmark style uh, hot link that we use. Mine just went out. Okay. And then we, smoky Denmark. Uh huh. And then we also have a spicy garlic sausage that we actually make homemade from scratch. Our good partner, Miss Ruth Ponce, created this sausage, and she allows us to sell it here. It's. Uh, it's a treat. It's, it's a tricky sausage because it's very flavorful, but the way, the way it works is once you're eating it, you're enjoying it, you get that flavor, and then at the end, there's a fire that you would not believe. Yes. Strong it sneaks up on you, huh? All right. All right. We just yeah, lost Brent's video no, for a okay. second, so my you. guess is somebody's trying to call him or text him. So, guys, he'll be right with you, all right? If you're tuning in, I promise he'll join you here in just a minute. Uh, we got you. We got you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. This has been just an absolute blast. So, hey Casey, before we go, Brent, can I just ask you about the birth of fried jello? Yes. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I have so, to know. <laughs> okay, so the birth of fried jello is the craziness of my brother Juan that you just saw. Okay. So we always come up with these crazy ideas for the fair. One year he comes up and he goes, let's fry Jello. And I what? was like, what? Like, how are we going to fry Jello? But then I thought to myself, if we do it, we'll probably be famous. <laughs> and so he was like, okay, oh, well, let's figure it out. And so he thought I just didn't really think about it. So I started researching and it took about three weeks to kind of figure out what we needed to do. And we actually figure out how to fry Jello, and it actually once it fries, it actually is still Jello on the inside. That so it's a absolutely bit of chemistry. We're like mad scientists of food at times. You guys are mad. You are scientists, and you <laughs> yeah, you all are crazy. <laughs> so, is the fried Jello on the menu? Is that something that people can get to take home with them? Since we're not no. having a state fair this year. No, but we do have a, a few items that we're going to be doing uh, here at the restaurant. Uh, we'll be doing the uh, chicken wing with the, the big red chicken bread. Uh, also, the fried Reese's and ice cream. I did that on a TV show and actually won the show with the fried ice with the fried uh, Reese's and ice cream. 
and then we'll also uh, do the toki uh, the taco oh, cone. Mm -hmm. And that so we take a, a tortilla and make it look like an ice cream cone, deep fry it, and then stuff it with uh, cilantro, lime, rice, uh, black beans, and uh, homemade barbacoa with uh, pico, de gallo, pico de gallo and salsa verde. That sounds and a little, amazing. And a little bit of queso fresco on top. Wow. Okay. So yeah, I'm, I'm there for that one. <laughs> definitely. So Brent, tell the people that are watching right now how you guys are faring through COVID and are, are you open for dining or just carry out only? How can people get their hands on your delicious food? Yes. Yeah, so we're, we're open for carry out and uh, curbside. Um, so you can come to 1820 West Mockingbird Lane. Uh, we're open from Monday through Saturday from 11 to 7. Um, you can also order online and um, have your order ready when you get here. Um, so our number is 214-352-2752. All right. And what's the web address if they want to check out the menu online? SmokyJohns.com. There you go. K-U-I-J-O-H-N.com. I love it. Well, Brent and Juan, thank you guys so much for your time. This has just been a blast. And I hate that it's already almost five o'clock and we need to let people, you know, get back to their, their families and their lives. And so um, oh, I see somebody just asked a great question. When are you opening one in Denton or on my side of the world over in Tarrant County too? Yeah, Brent, I, I think I remember you saying that there is some talk about expanding. Yes, we are looking to open uh, four more locations. Uh, we're working through all of the uh, uh, franchise issues. We're trying to make a decision which way we're going to go. Are we going to own them ourselves or are we going to create a, a franchise opportunity for others? I love to hear that. Well, I'll tell you my, my little community I live in over here in the Trophy Club Roanoke area. There's a lot of alumni here that would love to support you if you brought something over here to us. Okay. Nice. So just Keep that in mind, all right? <laughs> it's all Sounds about me. good. <laughs> all right. Well, Claudia, I'm going to turn it back over to you. And thank you guys so much for everything. Yeah, thank you, Brent. Thank you, everybody, for being here and joining us today.